My goodness me, I am standing between you and your lunch and we are slightly over time and I only have myself uh, to blame. So I, I just, I guess, want to offer a, a few reflections really. Um, it's been, the word extraordinary doesn't even begin to sort of sum it up, working and, and sort of leading a membership organisation when you can't be in front of the members and you can't be with your staff team has, has been a very, very strange time and we've tried to do everything that we can to, to be engaging and, and with you and supporting you, but I, I can't tell you how good it is, and I'm sure you feel it, to be back, to be back here together, um, having had last year the first virtual conference, which felt extraordinarily odd. And I, I think the virtual world, the hybrid world, it works to a point. It's, it's very good for process, transactional stuff. It's absolutely diabolical for relationship building. Um, it's amazing how many people who I thought were six foot five are actually um, my height. <laughs> Short. <laughs> um, so to be back together, um, I think you saw the engagement. You know, you, you can't do it on a screen. You can't challenge people on a screen. You know, you, you really do need to see the whites of people's eyes effectively. And, and that has been very, very important. And I guess the takeaway points, you know, Dave Ramsden, who, by the way, um, was absolutely petrified at, at speaking to this conference. He said, I've only spoken to 200 people together and it's very, very daunting. But I, I thought it was fascinating what he said, actually. And in particular, the point, you know, when you look at the journey that he has been on 10 years and as an economist in Treasury, he was very much involved in the decision making of whether we should join the euro or not, you know, joining uh, Alistair Darling's office the night before the financial crash and, and working in that environment. And, and yet, what did he say about this environment? Th this is unprecedented. He hasn't seen anything like this. And when you hear that um, from a man like uh, Sir Dave Ramsden, I think that's pretty telling, to be honest. And then, you know, when I, when I look at what I said, and I put so much thought into what I want to say and how I want to say it and how I want to influence. And I think we are absolutely 100% right to be focusing on the optimization, to be focusing on the really increased resource that needs to go into the SFI and this transition period. It's not in the right place at the moment. I'm absolutely certain of that. We've got so much opportunity before us. I think the panel session you heard just now, the opportunity is there. And to a certain extent, we can do a lot of it without government. But we, we go so much further when we go together. And I want to touch on Theo in a minute, but going together, you go further. And when I was challenging George Eustace yesterday, I, I realise sort of how far apart we are, and, and I guess what I would say, having received the pig farmer that I mentioned, I received another email from them at four o'clock this morning, and it's, you know, it really, really hurts to read emails like that, when they are sending sows off, they've got a son who's got a fantastic career effectively ahead of him that's being destroyed in front of his very eyes, when they haven't had responses from the minister, and probably the lack of empathy and care uh, is sometimes, I think, the hardest thing I find to face from people in government. You know, when I get emails like that, I, I want to respond. You know, I want to respond straight away. And the massive strength of the NFU is it, is it does respond, and we have the capability to respond, and we have the technical expertise to provide whatever people need. And it's, it's hard not being able to resolve this, but we will, but it will clearly not happen as fast as, as we would like. Um, George also thinking, I, I don't know what made him think that leaving the EU breaks the power of the trade associations, because I have got news for him on that. We will only ever, with your support, get stronger, more ambitious. We are not going anywhere, and the ending of holding him to account is not going to happen. Um, so, <laughs> you know, I see when I speak to the Argentinians and others, you could be an independent trading nation, but my goodness, 
Those people, they have a louder voice because, you know, they absolutely know whose feet they are holding to the fire. You can't blame the Brussels bureaucracy anymore. Our focus is on Parliament, is on Whitehall, and, and we absolutely will hold them to account. And we will get to a partnership way of working. I'm absolutely certain of that. But it's, it's, it's got to be a true and meaningful partnership. We will never be passengers on this journey. And the point that Theo made, um, you can see why he's such a fantastic leader of the World Farmers Organization. And when I was on a panel at the COP with Elizabeth Alaka, who is uh, effectively my opposite number in East Africa, representing well over 100,000 African farmers, th there was very little difference. In fact, there was no difference between what she was saying and what I was saying. And ultimately, if we, if we want agriculture discussed at the G7, at the G20, if, if we are going to deliver on climate change, then we can only do it through the farmers. We really can only do it. So the, the point that Theo made about going beyond advocacy, I think is a really strong one and, and something that, that we, the NFU, we need to empower everyone, every one of our members to work with us on this sort of going beyond advocacy really, really showcasing, as you heard from this panel, what we can do and how we can do it. And I guess I would just, just close by saying, you know, when I feel we've got the regulators agreeing with us, you know, it does make me sort of pause for thought. And both Susan Jebb, chairman of the FSA yesterday, and Emma Howard Boyd as chair of the Environment Agency, um, Susan said, I didn't disagree with one single word that you said in your speech. And when Emma Howard Boyd was leaving, I said, you can't. I said, when Farming Rules for Water landed, when the regulatory position statement landed, it landed with no warning. And I said, you can't keep expecting these guys to do more without the investment there, without the ambition there, without the right and policy environment. And she said, I don't disagree with anything that you're asking for. I really don't. So when the two regulators are agreeing with you, you, you know that you are fundamentally, absolutely in the right place. There is a job of work to do, I think, with this government. I, I think it became very, very clear yesterday that this is not about that binding partnership between environment and food production. And getting that political agreement on the optimization is, is not on the table at the moment yet. You know, it is very much around, you know, taking land out of production, 30% of land, don't forget, and, and raising standards. It will change. It will change. It always does. And we just have to keep championing this great industry. Don't forget, you know, a million people. If I look at the figures, you know, 75% of the public have a favourable view now of farming. 24% have a more favourable view than they have ever had. You know, the public are with us. They are really, really with us. So it's just a closed conference by saying the NFU, I'm facing an election, so I'm not going to talk about me, but what I am going to say is the NFU will do whatever it takes, whatever it takes on your behalf to shape that thriving future for your businesses. It will do always, whatever it takes. Enjoy your lunch. It's so wonderful to see you here. And thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, conference.